Hey everyone, I'm the Canadian Lad, and today I watched the trailer of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness at point two fabric speed and found some amazing hidden details. Now this trailer was actually shown after the credits in Spider-Man No Way Home, but was only officially released on YouTube last week. So I watched it in slow motion and found some details that you won't find anywhere else. But first, I'd like to thank Established Titles for sponsoring another video. There's a historic Scottish tradition where landowners are referred to as lords or ladies. Established Titles allows you to participate in the tradition by purchasing a one square foot of land on a private estate in Ordalley, Aberdeenshire, Scotland. Your purchase includes a certificate with a crest stating your unique plot number, which I would suggest framing and hanging somewhere for everyone to envy. Or if you waited until the very last minute to holiday shop like I always do, you can opt to receive an instant digital copy of the certificate and you're good to go. Established titles are partnered with charities such as One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future, and are committed to plant a tree with every purchase, which I absolutely love. So you're not only purchasing a really cool gift for yourself, for a loved one, but helping protect the pristine woodlands of Scotland. Best of all, gaining this title actually allows you to add it to certain documents. You can add it to your credit card or better yet, spice up your dating profile by adding a new title for a few extra matches. Click the link in the description or go to establishedtitles.com slash canadianlad10 to receive 10% off on top of any ongoing deals. Anyway, the trailer begins with Wong saying, Now this audio is from the trailer of Spider-Man No Way Home, which surprisingly wasn't in the movie. Don't cast that spell. It's too dangerous. In No Way Home, Wong actually doesn't stop Strange from casting in his spell. He simply says, and I quote, just leave me out of this. Because Wong himself also got convinced that Peter deserves a better life. And for that, if Strange has to cast a forgetting spell, he should do it. So Marvel actually changed it in No Way Home. And I have a pretty strong feeling they had to change it because of Multiverse of Madness. Because had Wong not allowed Strange to cast his spell, all the blame for cracking up the multiverse would only lie on Strange's shoulder. As opposed to now, it's on both of them. So in Multiverse of Madness, Wong and Strange are now both at fault. Maybe one more so than the other, but both have to team up to fix it. Moving on. We tampered with the stability of space-time. Your desecration of reality will not go unpunished. We see candles blow out at Kamartaj, and if you notice, we can also see a little bit of snow. So it immediately indicates the movie is taking place right after No Way Home. And if you notice, the candles actually don't blow out at the same time. So it's definitely not CGI. Because with Marvel's reputation, they kind of CGI almost everything. So right off the bat, we can assume the film's gonna be different, as Sam Raimi has directed it and probably used a lot more real-life props than just simple CGI. We then see Strange's broken watch from his first movie, which really played an important role in that film. Now there wasn't Easter egg in the first film where this broken watch stopped at a little over 5.15 on February 2nd. This was a reference to Bill Murray's Groundhog Day, where he wakes up on the same day again and again, just like Strange died again and again fighting Dormammu at the end of the first film. But notice in the trailer, this hand of the watch is no longer set in February, instead it's now in November, and even the timings are different. So it goes to show that even though Strange didn't fix the case of the watch, but it did fix the hands and the hour marker. And I like how the focus of the camera shifts from the watch to Strange's reflection, indicating that the first movie was about time, but Multiverse of Madness is gonna be around Strange. This is one of the main reasons why I love Sam Raimi. He can tell a story with the way he uses the camera. We then see the fabric of reality breaking apart. This looks really similar to what we've seen in What If Episode 4, where Strange Supreme altered an absolute point, and the fabric of reality started melting apart. Now by the looks of Strange, even he looks worried and scared of what's happening. And notice when the camera pans right and starts to fade out, we can see this number 814 on a building. Now this number could be a reference to the character Yao, aka the Ancient One from the comics, who also lives on Earth 814. I understand I could be reaching here, but we also have to take into account that this is probably a set Marvel built, so random numbers may not be that random. Moving on. It was the only way. But I never meant for any of this to happen. So we can hear Strange saying it was the only way. He of course said something similar to Tony Stark in Infinity War after sacrificing half the universe. There was no other way. 
we then see the sanctum getting flooded with seawater because of not one but two broken walls. Now we learned in Spider-Man No Way Home that the sanctum walls are thousands of years old and that the sanctum is built at the intersection of cosmic energy currents. So it kinda makes sense that nature is behaving a bit weird inside the sanctum given the fact that it's right at the intersection. But as we know the walls are thousands of years old, so something really devastating has to happen in order for these walls to break open like this. Now notice this version of the sanctum has these two statues on both sides of the stairs. The sanctum we see in our universe or very recently No Way Home, there was no statue like this. So it is possible that this sanctum is an alternate version of the one we have. It could belong to Strange Supreme. Cut to the next shot where Doctor Strange slowly looks upwards. But take a look at this symbol on Strange's suit, which is missing in No Way Home and in all other movies that he appeared in. This is a comic accurate symbol from classic Doctor Strange comics. Although this symbol is actually white in the comics, I'm glad they decided to add this touch to Strange's outfit. And I'll have you know this isn't the first time Marvel decided to include this symbol on his suit. And what if episode 4, Strange Supreme had this symbol on his suit as well? Then we see the shot of Strange hovering his hand by the window at the sanctum. Keep it in mind, I'll talk about it at the end. Then we hear Strange say, I didn't mean for any of this to happen. Strange said the exact same line in what if episode 4. I didn't mean for this to happen! But I think all of these dialogues are there to throw us off. I'll explain it in a bit. We then see Wanda channeling her chaos magic. But notice behind her, we can see a rectangular shaped orange door which seems awful lot like the time doors we've seen in Loki. Now of course this is just a theory, but this orange glow behind Wanda, which also happens to be in a rectangular shape, might indicate that Wanda will travel the multiverse through some of the time doors. The Time Variance Authority aka the TVA used it all the time in Loki. All you gotta do is have it tempered, activate the door and just walk through it. And that may be it behind Wanda here. We then see Christine Palmer walking down the aisle in her wedding, while Steven watches from the pews. We can also see Dr. Nick just beside Steven, who we've seen previously in the first film. But in this trailer, he looks a bit old with a lot of grey hair, which might indicate that Dr. Nick wasn't blipped, so he grew 5 years older than Steven. What's interesting here is that even though Steven's full focus is on Christine, but Christine isn't even looking at him. So I wonder if this is a nightmare sequence, where you'd see the love of your life getting married to someone else. I mean, why would Christine invite her ex to her own wedding? That doesn't sit well with me. Or maybe Christine survived the blip and is now in a long-term relationship with someone else. Then we get our first look at America Chavez, who will be played by Sochi Gomez. We can see her signature star from the Marvel comics on her jean jacket. The star represents her ability to create star-shaped portals that allow her to travel across the multiverse. And I think this is why Wanda might be the villain in this movie, as she would want to possess the powers of America Chavez, which would allow her to travel to another universe and get her children back. In the comics, America Chavez also works with the Young Avengers, who can of Billy, Tommy, Kate Bishop, Eli Bradley, Casey Lang, and many more who we have seen already in this phase of the MCU. And as I said, America Chavez can open portals across the multiverse shaped like a star. So in the very next shot, we can see one of her star-shaped portals. In the next scene, we can see Wong with both of his hands tied up. But notice if you look closely, he's tied up with some sort of magical energy. The energy here is either red or orange, whatever it is that Marvel decides. I think it is Scarlet Witch using chaos magic to hold Wong hostage. So this shot could be from a very important part of the film, considering Wong is now the Sorcerer Supreme and not Steven, as we've learned in No Way Home. Now, if you're wondering why would Wanda go after Steven and Wong, well, both of them may stand between her and America Chavez. Moving on. Wanda. Oh, I knew sooner or later you'd show up. I made mistakes, and people were hurt. I'm not here to talk about Westview. Then what are you here for? I need your help. With what? What do you know about the multiverse? We then see the Marvel logo incorporating an older logo from Phase 2, and another one from Fox's X-Men universe. Now why would they suddenly use an X-Men intro in Multiverse of Madness? Well, because multiple leaks and concept art revealed that Professor Xavier is going to make his MCU debut in this film as the leader of the Illuminati, and apparently Stephen Strange will be arrested by Ultron bots and brought before Professor X in handcuffs. The concept art was shared by My Time to Shine on Twitter, and after seeing the trailer where we can actually see Strange's hands being locked with some mystical device, 
nice, chances are this concept art is indeed true and Professor X will be in the movie. Now, Professor X's appearance will plant the seed for X-Men in the MCU and could imply that the group has existed in secret for years, with Doctor Strange and a few others being the only ones who knew about them. Now, Clea will also be a part of the film as Professor X's advisor, who will also be played by Rachel McAdams. So chances are she won't have much of a role as Christine Palmer, but as Clea, her role could be very significant. And that's why Marvel used a certain X-Men intro in their logo. Now, the way Marvel used a broken glass effect on the logo again foreshadows what's to come in this movie. It's a metaphor throughout the trailer indicating that reality is breaking apart. We then see Steven and Wanda having a conversation where Strange asks for help. Now, judging by the expression of Steven, even he looks surprised seeing Wanda here. So something tells me after this conversation with Wanda here, he will realize that she's not what she seems to be. And a massive fight may take place over here. I'm sorry, Stephen. I hope you understand. We then see Doctor Strange, America Chavez, and Christine Palmer, or Clea, standing near the hatch of a ship. And when it opens, we see another dimension on the other side, where gravity works differently from our universe. You notice with all these broken columns flying across randomly, these three particular columns actually make up the letter M. A very clever reference to the House of M comics, which this movie is heavily based on. And the use of this hatch could also be a subtle reference to X-Men. Go fuck yourself. But please don't abuse me on this, this is just a theory. We then see Mordo with his new look, and he's clearly at the same Sanctum Sanctorum. But him looking so different and taking into account the premise of this movie, this could be a variant of Mordo. And him wearing such a fancy outfit might indicate that in his universe, he holds a much higher position than our Mordo. We then see this cloud taking over Kamertaj, but notice Wong's outfit here. He's wearing the same suit as he did in this shot, where he was hanged and tied up. So my theory is whoever is causing this cloud to take over Kamertaj is also the one blowing it all up and then later torturing Wong. And it's very likely that it will be Scarlet Witch. Cut to the next shot where Scarlet Witch can be seen floating on the air with her fingertips turning black. This is probably because she absorbed all of Agatha Harkness's power in WandaVision, whose hands also turned black when she used dark magic. The notice Scarlet Witch has also gone through some of her own costume changes. She no longer dons a sleeveless suit, it's fully covered now. But notice this new part of the sleeves that she has now, looks a bit darker from elbow up, implying the new powers and knowledge that she gained are incredibly evil. Greatest threat to our universe. Then we see this scene which I talked about already where Strange has his hands locked with a mystical device while fighting Mordo. Potentially a variant of Mordo. Notice there's slight green light emitting from the handcuffs. This may be a button to unlock or lock the handcuffs. Then we see this massive explosion at Kamartage, which I've already predicted could be Wanda's doing. Now if you ask me, why would Wanda go so mad that she not only goes after Wong and Strange, but also all the sorcerers there? Well, I think Strange is holding something or someone here at Kamartage and Wanda is after it. And that's why she has gone total rogue in pursuit. Now notice in this same shot, we can briefly see this horned character who is most likely Rintra, making his debut in the MCU. Rintra in the comics is a magical green minotaur from another dimension, who was sent by his mentor to learn from Doctor Strange. We then see Steven in a dark version of the Sanctum, casting some sort of a spell. Notice in this scene, this window of the Sanctum is broken. We did see this intact earlier in the trailer, but now it's broken, indicating a fight may take place between the two Stranges inside this alternate version of the Sanctum. Now notice, while Doctor Strange is performing magic, surrounding him are blown out candles. And where have we seen a similar sort of setup? That's right, when Scarlet Witch was conjuring her chaos magic, she had candles lit up all around her as well. So maybe Scarlet Witch was here performing magic, and later on Strange got here recreating her spell, trying to figure out what Scarlet Witch must have done. That's why the candles surrounding Strange are blown out, and that's why his magic looks similar to what Wanda had done previously. Um, I almost forgot to mention, if you slow it down and zoom in, you can quite clearly see that Strange is harnessing the dark hole to figure out what Wanda is after. We then see Strange unleashing some beasts from within him, which we have already seen in What If Episode 4, where Strange Supreme absorbed a lot of interdimensional beings, and then later unleashed it. Now, Strange Supreme had to pay a hefty price for absorbing all these beasts in What If. And now the fact that our Strange also possesses such a level of power within him, he must have done something wrong in the past as well. Um, I, I mean the past mistakes that we're yet to see, which is why he possesses such beasts within him in the first place. And I'm guessing to sustain such a powerful beast inside you, you'd have to hurt 
harness a lot of dark magic. I like how for a split second it makes him look really evil exactly like in What If. Cut to Gargantos, not to Magora, throwing a bus at Strange and Chavez. Notice the attention to detail here. We can even see the reflection of the bus on Gargantos' eyes. I love attention to details like this. Strange then conjures a massive blade, turns it around and uses it to cut the bus in half. But I found something important here. Notice as soon as America Chavez noticed that Strange is conjuring a blade, she immediately started moving and took cover behind Steven. She knew what Strange was up to just by looking at the weapon. This shows how good she is already, and with Strange and Wong as her mentor, she might as well become one of the best. Now the final scene. Is you. Things just got out of hand. Now over here we see Evil Strange or Strange Supreme or Defender Strange based on which reports you want to believe until the movie releases. Now remember I told you to keep this scene in mind? Notice in both shots Strange's hair looks very similar. And in both places he's hiding his left hand for some reason. Both versions of Strange just casually walk inside this alternate version of the Sanctum. So my theory is Evil Strange is nothing but a misdirect. And the main antagonist of this film is Scarlet Witch aka Wanda. And that's it. This would be my breakdown of Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness trailer in point to fabric speed. I hope I managed to give you lads a few new details that you haven't seen before. If I did then please give me a thumbs up, grab the subscribe button and turn notifications on. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter to get updates about my videos. My last video of the year is coming on 31st December and that will be my full breakdown of Spider-Man No Way Home. I'm working very very hard for that video and I've already watched No Way Home 6 times now in theaters looking for details. So I would strongly recommend you watch that when it's released. Till then I'm Kevin Hart and I'll see you lads in the next one.